did you get a big boat right now? I had a bought a boat, a real good boat, hey. I enjoyed it too. Sure, the lake's right beside me, I'd be fool not to get something. Right, right. I threatened it for years to buy a boat and I never did, and then I just the day of the year. Never try actually sailing the, with the, the sails and the wind and all that crap. No time for that, put in the path, the nailer. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> Berlin. Couldn't get caught for speeding. First day out there. In the boat? In the boat up around our skin, <laughs> ah. five knots. I was causing a wake and people were waving at me. I didn't know what to do. Going mad about it. Tied me to the boat, the warden did. Such a. Yeah, <laughs> Welcome to the new episode of The Loft. We are very excited because we've been waiting for this moment for quite a long time. We have the two icons, the two faces of our whole 2018. Contract and royalty. Johnny Horner and Brian Neal. <laughs> <laughs> I know, really. <laughs> What's the crack, man? What's the year been like? Oh, we're all very dry in the yards, anyway. Very dry. We're down 1, 1,600 acres just because of the dryness. Very busy with diggers and everything else. Drains that should have been done last year and the year before because it was too wet. That's what we've been at. Did you get his 1600 acres, Johnny? Did you? Did I, I definitely did. Uh, he caught it. He caught it. But he no, I the best year I ever had in my life. Hey? You haven't had me the money yet for that 1600 acres. Or it's coming. It's, it's coming. I had a great year. In every, every way, like, mighty year. Well, what new toys are in the barn since we last met with you? We changed the harvester, but now our new 1100 harvester changed that. You were talking about that and then you held off for a year? We held off for a year, yeah. We got a new one this year. A new 1400 chrome rake again this year. And four new tankers. Four new 4,000 gallon tankers. What is the legalities around the big tankers for ferrying? You're on the limit. You're on the limit. Slightly a wee bit over. 34, you're not? No, you're only 31 tonne. But the law has passed for 38 tonne. It is passed in England and here. But unfortunately, the problem is that Stormount doesn't want to do anything. They want to take their wages and don't want to do anything for it. So it's lying on some shelf somewhere, collecting all the dust, more than likely with everything else. It's just sitting down there. Waiting for the big red stamp on it. Getting the red stamp. Well, what's new in Johnny's barn? Uh, two Masseys and I bought a wee John Deere, a wee M series John Deere. What Masseys did you go for? 6615 and a 7718. And a three and a half thousand gallon slurry cat. Did you buy a three and a half thousand slurry cat? Yeah. Bought her back in April. Was it cheap? It was cheap. cheap. Real cheap. Real cheap. <laughs> <laughs> I was a good tank early. The, the dry year, the two harvesters, you know, you both run on two harvesters, and did it take the second harvester this year? No. No. Mine, second harvester, <clears throat> 140. 30 acres, waste of time, didn't need it at all. Mine on 1500. I reckon we 15. That was why I, was only, I, only, I don't run two harvesters, I only bought the second one. That if something breaks down, it doesn't matter where we are, our furthest farm away would be an hour and 10 months. So I know that that harvester is an hour and 10 months away at any time. Well, what's that harvester doing in depreciation terms? I mean, is it, what's it costing you to have that sitting there? It's costing me nothing, but that's because the price of the new one is a lot dearer now than it was 2014. And Johnny will agree on that too. That the new <coughs> the new harvester from 2014 to now would be up in around 100, Jenning from 80 to 100 thousand pounds. So therefore, your second hand one is actually going up as well. But that's still a lot of capital in terms of cash flow, in terms of finance payments, or whatever way you've gone about buying it. You know, yes. Would you not rather have another couple of tractors sat in the yard? No, because a tractor can't lift silage. You can always borrow a tractor, beg a tractor, hire a tractor. hire a tractor. It's not all the time that you can get a harvester. And when you're busy, every contractor will be busy around you. This year is a total different year than any other year. Any other year, you're just a window. You have a window that you, you have X amount of acres to lift in that window, and you need to be there, and that's it. If you're not there, another contractor will be there. There's three machines you need, right? That's the mowing, lifting, and broker again. And if you have the three right, everything will fall into place. Uh, we have a spare rake as well. Well, you need it too. <coughs> we have a spare. We have a spare <laughs> rake. You need it. And uh, it would have done twelve hundred acres. The new rake, there was a wee sir clip come out, so we housing got damaged, so it had to come off. We took a new rake out and it done fifteen acres, 
on the terminal box went in that. So even though you have a spare rig at £40,000, we were still beat. We got another contractor to come in and give us a hand. Um, the second field, the fellow wasn't used to the field, took off and it got wrecked too. So there was £130,000 of rakes. That was the same. Three and rakes. not one rake was going that night. Unbelievable. Three I, rakes I had. Unbelievable. I can't Crown wing pinion and the, and the two crones. And the class, the three dowels on the side of the, where the crown wing pinion sits. And it fell off. Well, what do you do? What in that scenario? What, what I had to ring another contract to come and rake for me. I couldn't believe it. I never thought I'd ever be in that position with three rakes. What's, when you have to ring some of your competition to come and help. I mean, that's what I was going to ask. Is, is who, it, who is it you ring? Is it the guy within reach of you? Or is it the guy that's... No, ring far away. Yet, no, I don't. You're very different. I don't. I ring ring whoever I can. I ring further away. I would ring further away. My, the one that would be nearest me, um, I wouldn't ring him, no. I'd ring him, Should you know someday they're going to ring me? Like It is a competitive industry, like, I mean... No, they don't ring me, do you know? They don't ring me. <laughs> they don't ring me, I don't ring them. Do you not notice, but now, Brian, since the well, um, bad years that we had there, that farmers don't mess about as much anymore? You know, if there's a dry day at all... They would take a chance, they would take a chance, but uh, in our peninsula, we do a lot of tedding. We, we don't do it ourselves, the, the, there's two or three men does the tedding, and they'll ted the grass any from once to four or five times. Uh, so we are just used to lumpy grass, lumpy, bumpy grass, that's just what we're used to. That's what I'm going to say, how, how do you train them then if you're not involved? Like we, I don't train them man. I just I bought a crone harvester to work with them because there's no other harvester out there that'll lift lumps and bumps every day just and not give Mental problems. Well, my new feed reader, my new pickup reel, will it not help me? It will help you, yes. But it'll never be a crone, like, it's class inside of it. <laughs> 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 no, I mean, John, oh, no matter what I do to it, like, it won't be a crone, like. <laughs> <laughs> I can let you the baby one. the crone is good in ups, to be fair to her. You still haven't persuaded Johnny to buy one, like? It's wild hard, even when I was changing from John Deere to class, like, when you have something and you're used to it and it's done well, why change? Five years I had that uh, glass harvester. Never put a wearing plate in her. That's a fact, eh? It's premium named, like. Never put a wearing plate in her. Knives, shear bar, oils, tines. Better than the devil you know. Well, she, she, that's it. What else can she can? If you get away with that day for five years, what do you say? So we're going to play a game of Lego. <laughs> so you've got all these harvester brands. Anything you want from any harvester. Build your own harvester. How would you do it? Bernard already has it done. <laughs> <laughs> Spot the fanboy. <laughs> I suppose you'd spend six months trying to convince him to buy the one you've got. Johnny, what would you build? Well, I'd like to see my new class. Is what this new pickup rail is going to be like now? Yeah. I suppose like rear suspension in the class. So wouldn't it like? Uh, I suppose the three feet rollers maybe. <laughs> we can do a harvester swap for a day. You take his and he. Takes no, but I've had the crow night and I do like her. Like. Oh. But he's never had a class out. Like, have you? No. No, I see there you are. Well, she I did years ago, six ninety. Oh. Six ninety. <laughs> <laughs> not the same drive as the six ninety. No, no. Bit, no you... <laughs> I keep hearing stories about all these races, but where where Brian's looking at the class and he's going past it. I never had anybody manly enough to come in and race me. Oh, I did plenty of times. I raced plenty of them. Did you? Oh, I yeah. Tell a story of your favourite time that you went head to head with something. Uh, a man had a nine seventy, and we took um, a new a seven nine fifty down, and we raced the two, and the first word I beat him by two, three feet. Second sword, he beat me by two or three feet. And the third sword, we come out tines. The tines was even level as anything. There was nothing on it. But I said I would be back, and I did go back. The second time I went back, the only time I seen the class was in the mirror. We were out mirror, when I passed them all the time, constantly going past. <clears throat> we were lifting a 50 foot sword of grass at 12.7 mile an hour, and that was because I couldn't get it to go any harder. That's her, that's her own right, I speak. That's, and I have that on video. We still have that video. That video will stay with me forever. <laughs> <laughs> Is that when you learned to do the dyno and in between, or when did that start? That's when we learned how to program things properly. Well, talk, talk me through the dyno thing and, the, and, the, and powering them up. And like, I mean, how do you get into that technology, that computer work that people in our industry are, are traditionally afraid of? Well, I served my time as a mechanic. <clears throat> and was always interested in engines, always was interested in making something, trying to get it to go better or, or <coughs> more economical or stronger. 
uh, worked at Cook Engineering for seven years. They were very good at making things heavy. We worked in quarries. They had a contracting business. I'm going back. I'm 49. Going back, I was 16. He made cogs for a 7600 gearbox because first and second gear, second gear between second and third was a high jump. So he made gears that there was first, then second was slightly faster. So there was a less of a jump between second and third. So it's continued from there that where I'm mapping tractors, where even mapping shouldn't say it, brand new ones now, um, and they're performing better. They're having less problems, and they're 12%, 12, between 12 and 14% easier on diesel. I can't get my head around why they can sell the old engines on the other side of the world with nothing on them, no garbage. That annoys me every day. And yet, well, we're all tied down with this regulations that's, that's making them more expensive to buy. They don't perform as well. What's your take on that? To be fair now, I started our harvest the other day underneath the loft, and you could have stood in there all day. She just sat in there and just put a bit of steam out of her and that was it. You know, they are good for the environment, like at the end of the day, that's what it's there for, like, it's clean running, like. Engines are vastly improved, but they go on about emissions all the time. Putting liquid urea in an exhaust, mm -hmm. that gives nothing but bar. All this emissions isn't reliable enough, would be the word I'd be looking for. But hey, there's, is that not going to stop now, that whole emission thing's where we are now, you know, we'll keep, keep going on? Well, Stormont doesn't seem to know what they're doing, so well, I, I can't answer that one and a lot of us need to get together to fix things, to bring the community together. Where it happened to the good old person when you got a puncture on the side of the road and, and a man come and stopped you and helped you, that's gone for whatever reason. When I bailed for Cooks when I was 16 years of age and we went to Port of Down, I drove a Ford 5000, which took three hours and three hours and 20 minutes to go from, Port of, from Newton Arch to Port of Down. Everybody come to help each other. You could have went to bail and there could have been five or six small tractors, 880 W Browns, 35s, 4000s, 4 sixes. That's gone. Oh, that's gone now. Yeah, that's everybody's gone. out. Everybody wants to hate to see their neighbour doing better than them. And that's a that's shame. That's the way it has got now. That's a shame. I wish it was back to the old reality that everybody helped uh, each other. But people had nothing, Brian. I think that's what it was. People had less. Sometimes you're maybe better with less and no, more. No, I will. That's it, I. Better with less and more friends and with better with more and less friends. Mm. You can put more work through and have less money. Sure, I've done that. We all have done that for a long time, but I think it have got it's got to the stage now that keep good machinery and work it hard. Like, yeah, because like, like as a spectator on the industry, you guys are in. Then, like I watch it, the, the the average horsepower of a harvester now is significantly higher in the last ten years than it was. You know, we're we're chasing guys through so hundreds of acres a day instead of instead of a hundred acres yeah. a day. We're getting more efficient. We're getting no more money for our, our work, you know. But you're covering more ground to make up for that. Yes. So in 1997, we had a failed harvester. We were doing the whole outfit. You'd have bought it for 120 grand. What, what 120 grand by the day? A, a real good tractor. That's all under bay. But we're doing a lot more acres. Where's that going to stop? I mean, how much further? We've been looking at it's at its peak. It's at its peak because farmers couldn't pay any more. Mm -hmm. That's a problem. But do the manufacturers know that? So they don't care. So there's machines to sell. You look at both your right hands, you both got designer watches, you both got the wedding bands. That there was £1.99p. Uh, what do the, what do the <laughs> missus think of your, your profession and contracting and all that stuff? Well, my woman goes off the head about it. <laughs> but uh, it was there before she came along and she knows the way it is and she knows I love it. And what what winds her up the most about it? The buying the machinery, the new machinery. The like when I go home this evening, I can't, I'm going to have a bad day today. <laughs> what did you buy? I bought a new harvester today. What did we go for? I went for uh, an 880. An 880 class. Yes, they bought a new loading shovel. <laughs> oh, you are in for it. Two kids, too. You are in for it. When you tell the wife, you are in for it. That is board. the truth. That is the truth. <laughs> and, or, uh, I don't know how to break it to her. Tell you the truth. Do you do that bit by bit, or do you just go for the I big bag? Sometimes no, you're she waits to the, you know the way you get a copy of the HP. Oh, the post. oh, oh I wait that day, oh. and then they're all laying open on the t kitchen table when I come home. And what's this all about? <laughs> <laughs> then I'll explain. Then you know. Yeah, you know what? We always go for holiday. Every year I go to holiday. This year we're in Tenerife. Last year we're in Tenerife. We've been on cruises. Sometimes 
the wife would get at me a wee bit about not being able to go away. I do make an effort, always make an effort every year. I do, I love my, I love my effort. I go away, I have, we're away either for 10 days. In fact, actually the 10th day, I could have stayed on in our 10 days. Well, um, yeah, Cruise. Tenerife this year, absolutely brilliant. In the pool every day, learnt myself to swim. So that was, that I went was, to New York, was me. Cruise, from New York to Canada. Brilliant. 13 days, Fantastic. Made best time ever. That's the only no, one. No, we left thing. on the 16th of October. Yeah, it used to be every Sunday I worked adjusting brakes, mechanicing. I try now to run a fresh. We run a fresher fleet. If I have to work on a Sunday, we we'll do. <clears throat> but as a whole, the other forty-eight weeks of the year, we make an effort to go out and spend time together. We never worked one Sunday this year, not one. I think I done two. I think. I think. We didn't have. Do to. you have the choice? When the time comes, do you have the choice? I bought a, I bought a boat the year, and I said there was going to be no Sunday work. We were right in the boat. But if it had been a catchy year like the one before, I was still going right in the boat. Yeah, I you'd have just said that's that. So that's that's your leisure time then. She have to have a life, like. I still be. have a life, but uh, my work, I suppose, is number. It's well, I, to be fair, if it rained all week and Sunday was a good day, you'd have to go. Well, you're. Not farming, but Johnny is. Like, you, are you involved in the farm? Is your father running that? Oh, I'm involved in it, but I wouldn't do a big pilot, like. I don't have to do a big pilot. Uh, you're, obviously, you're busy with it. Well, I have enough to do on my plate, like. I help out if I have to, like. There's no there's no crossover there in terms of keeping the guys busy in the winter and all oh, that. Oh, no, they help milk there now in the mornings and stuff. I watch you and they clean down the cubicles. Oh, they do help and they draw slurry there and from one tank to another. Oh, no, they do help, like. But do you find that as a business helps you keep staff? Not a bit, so I'm, like, I'm getting nothing for it. It's just voluntary. I mean, my father thinks it's great, like. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's nothing. But then it's different with my own farm, it's different. But, but you have a yard. yard. Your, dad yard. your dad doesn't charge for a yard where I had doesn't to. doesn't charge me for that, like, either. I had to, but what? doesn't charge me for Free? that. Free? Like. No, he gives me. Can I go to your house too, and Will? <laughs> <laughs> no, he never ever charged me for that, like, like, to be fair to him. What about staff? Do you, do you have problems getting staff, keeping staff? Two, two staffs away this last two years and I could do with one good man, another one good man. Don't want a man, want a man that can drive a harvester or do anything. I could, I could do with two as well. I could do with one. I, I, I find just to ask been around quite a bit of the country, that's, that's a constant thorn for everyone. Sure, what, what man that's married and his children at home can't tell his wife is what time he's going to be home at? Sure, who'd do it? Well, that's our job. That's our job. You don't know. I could... Send my boys away at half eight in the evening. Go in and start lifting grass, 40 acres, 50 acres from him. Because he's wrong, it's raining tomorrow, it has to be done. Then boys thought they were getting home 20 minutes ago. Different if you've got the shed business there and you've had to do it. Yeah. You're able to go, look, I'm going to give you eight hours a day for five days a week in the winter. Yes, they always well, If you can't offer hours. that to someone, you know, what's he to do for those three months? Mm. Well, I always do. I always do. There's other contractors beside me and they don't. The boys go away and they're, they're finding it harder than I am. Yes, they're finding it harder to get labour. And they're bringing boys in that they wouldn't let drive a wheelbarrow. Mm. You pay, would pay reasonable money to get decent men. It's not a tanker or anything. It's got to be really, and any machinery now has got to be, Johnny, you really agree. It's got that dear and expensive. You can't put lunatics on them anymore. No, it has to be good, good man. man, good work, man. What's that feel like whenever you're you're having to take someone that you don't want driving your tractor? Yeah, I only take men that I want driving my tractor. Again, that that works. That works when you need one, but when you need five, oh, you take. Oh, I, that's, Brian's that's different. He can always right. I have to take sometimes with a hog. But no, to be fair, like I have right right fellas. Like they're not bad fellas. I not on them. Stephen's still there. I mean, oh, Stephen well, he comes around him, but he's he's a, he's a lorry driver. So he oh, the man. He's still there. He's not a bad driver, you know. Was it a calm year in the cab? Ah, uh, it wasn't too bad. I didn't drive much the year. I'd say a bit. I'd be tired if I left the 3,000 acres. If I'd, I'd done it. You starting to retire? Oh, no, it was just a roster of the harvester. Everybody knows you from that episode that, that you did, and it was very popular. And is that a typical day with you? Oh, yeah, that's every day. Yeah. That's every day. Oh, it's not every day, but it's most days, like I. Depending on how things go, and that was a bad year, like, it was a wet year and things, wild small windows get worked on, like Brian said, two days. This year was a pleasure, like. Sure, we still worked long hours, but I only run one harvester. It was that year that you run about, I run two harvesters every single day. If there was harvesters going out, there was two out. You know, two everything. Watching that back, Johnny, the episode, you know, 
What was that like the first time you saw it? That is the reality of it. That's the way it is. And that's I pass from works it like. Are you one of these guys that like boils in a second? But no, no, but my boys don't take that to heart. You. Like, no, I say whatever I want to them, and that's it. It's forgot about. Once they come back to the next load, I'm not still in bad humor with them fellas. Like, are you you forget about it? Oh, well. I mean, they know that. That's the way they are. Like, and they'd soon say something to me. Do you know? They'd soon say something to me back. Like, that's just John. <laughs> you know, well, I, that's it. But I don't, I don't highly begrudge. Like, because the boys that is learning, sure, if you don't shout at someone, you do something wrong. How's he ever going to know that he's done it wrong? But then there's the, there's the softly gently approach of coming to show you how you did that wrong. No, you no, know. no, that takes too long. It's far easier <laughs> just to tell him what he's done wrong and be ignorant to him for the two load or three load, and he'll say, "I'll not do that again." He gets some bad humour. That's it sorted. Sure, some of them lads come to me; they have no clue when they leave. They're as good a drivers as you could get. No doubt about it, like. Refined and fire. I would just learn and pick it up. They have to go on with it. It's wild busy. You're flat out working long hours. You either get good at it or you're not going to. It's not going to. It's either for you or it's not. End of story. If a man takes 10 days or a fortnight and he hasn't got better at it, he's not getting better of it. If you're starting out now, but had the knowledge you have now, what would you do different? I don't know because I had no money. <laughs> I had no money either. Johnny, I used to lift dead animals. I went from a, a stead mechanic for a long time and bought a run for lifting dead animals in the countryside. And uh, I had no money either. I got a tough too. I would say buying good machinery where I would have went what wrong. I tried to buy something old and make good of it. But really and truly all I was doing was from good money off their bad. Like uh, I bought second hand tankers and stuff and tires done on them and pumps done on them and they're full time you know, if you take a set of tires now, even then they were eight hundred pound. Two thousand today for a tanker. But I'm only saying if I had bought a new tanker then I'd bought it for eight grand, the tanker wouldn't have lost me a shilling. I I still had it today, that's fifteen years ago now. That tanker would still be worth what I probably give for it, maybe a thousand less. You know what I mean? I'd have bought better machinery. The tractor always done the job, and even if it didn't, I could have got the farmers. You know, I'd have got something done. Uh, good machinery. Would you be as good at, at fixing the mechanic and knowing what's going on? And well, I like guess, John. Uh, I still take a new one down to have a look at them, so I don't really know there. <laughs> if you have work to do and the machine's broke, it's no use to you. But you will get it fixed. Yeah. If you own, you've HP payments to make and you know the work has to be done, you will get it fixed. Well, again, that's one of the questions was in the grip is, as you, there's a lot of appetite for young ones wanting to get started. Do they go second hand and run it on with big hours, or do they start? It's as simple as this here, John. I buy a harvester, or tractor, a mower, or a machine for pushing in. I buy it on the strength that I have the work to do it. So if I had no work, I would be buying the biggest ball of crap, the cheapest I could get, to make sure that I could pay for it. And that's the way it goes. You know, a young lad today went out and bought a new tractor and no work for it. She wanna, how are you going to pay for it? On the strength of what? So, to get a start made, then you're saying, get something to cheap. get you going. Cheap as you can get it. And go and look it might door. look like nothing, but it'll get you going. I never knocked anybody's door and took, anybody, took work off anybody else. But that's the problem with a younger, a younger person gets a machine from his dad or hands it down or borrows You're hungry too, you're done. hungry like... I never went to anybody's door ever. Did Brian, anybody. you got into a time where farmers were doing their own work? But we never went to anybody's door. Looking for and, it? And taking it off another contractor. But never. You didn't have to, you see. And neither did I. No, but the new, the younger fella they have to do that. would have to go and undercut it to take it off us. My, uh, or take my, it off my work was already there for me. And do you get that happening? Yes, I do, yes. Yeah. Well, like, I, mean, I saw that for years too with my uncle. You know, there's always, there's always somebody willing to work on that race to the bottom in price. There's always somebody ready to have a go at it, burn a pot of cash. They just see, but if you're out there, how do I say this to you? Um, if you don't have the work and you're sitting at home, you'd say, well, sure, I'm doing nothing anyway. If I cover the cost today, that's, I, I, you've gained. So a person coming up has nothing to lose. Brian doing, what, 7,000 acres? What do you do? Yeah. So he's plenty to lose. But he knows that he has to pay. He's bought the machines, like I'm after telling you there, on the strength of what work he has. So Brian knows he's to get 65 or 60, whatever it is, pound an acre, to pay for that machine. 
And then there's somebody else coming in and doing it for 45. Maybe they can do it for it because they're on the way up. You know what I mean? But how long can how long can someone sustain that that hungry mentality? You know? That can only last Not like one year. Time. One year. Gary writes in and he says uh, he wants to know if you've got automatic tail doors for your trailers this year. I don't know. I don't like tail doors in them. Problem solved. Yes. Problem solved. Until the man forgets the open one and lets the back axle. Uh, has that happened? No, it hasn't happened. Yet. No. <laughs> you certainly got the know. Like, what sort of drivers have you, Joey? Good. <laughs> No, but Hydro Tail does a great job, but... Brilliant, absolutely fantastic. Can't tip it up and bend it in bits. I've seen Taylor's coming, Taylor's coming out the field of me, and the boy didn't even know he'd done it. Quiet as a mouse along the road. Taylor, like that. Oh, well, yes. Seen that, do you? Three foot from the butt latch. Uh, Hugh wants to know the best bit of machinery you've ever bought and why. I'd say the best thing I ever bought was the 7700 I bought him. That was a good hour. Right. And, yeah. you, and you could hear her going from 20 mile away oh, to... Oh, Jeepers, was great. And that's no on. joking. You need them, them horner mods to make them go then. I got him to come down mod. and I says, Brian, I need a bit more power. No bother. It was a sweet box. Stuck it on the side of her. Great job. He opened it up. He says, there now from one nine. He says, that's your power. Just screwed up to nine. <laughs> close it up again. Just close it up again. But whenever she was going, she used to hunt. She didn't sit out. She wasn't idle. She sit and go down the field, run, 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 eat and stuff like so I said to Brian, I said, Brian, I says, whenever the season's over, take that back. And so I says, he can stop that from happening. No, he don't. Time to give me more power. That's <laughs> <laughs> you did. It didn't I didn't work, know what sold it. I was wild. I'd love to tie it her. What was the best thing I ever bought machinery-wise? Going back to the older days, I think, a 30-40. I gave £6,000 for it. I bought it within around 1,800 hours on it. And sold it with 11,000 hours on and I put a TV turbo on it and that was in 1993. And everybody said it would never stick it. It was doing 125 on a dyno. It was doing 98 before I put the turbo on it. It's a TV turbo. So going back to things, it was simple in life. That 3040 never must have been. It was a no PU cab too. Okay, yeah, wasn't there a square cab? Square cab. And I put 11,000 hours <laughs> on. Uh, and Virgo, what was, was the gear? Where was the gears in? Right? In the forward. Here, here. here. Here, absolutely brilliant. And Virgil Wilkinson bought that tractor. I traded that tractor in for a 3650 of Brent Dorman. And Virgil Wilkinson and me still talk about it. I wish I still had the tractor. Favourite thing about the job? Favourite day of the job, well, lifting grass on a nice day and everything going well and nobody screaming at you. There's no better feeling. Yeah, I agree on that. No better feeling. I agree on that. Everybody in good form, things going well, putting acres away. Have you ever had one of those days? Or is oh, I've had hundreds of them. I've had hundreds of them. I've had hundreds of them days. You ever think of doing anything else? Do you know what I could do for a week? I could do, uh, I could do run the government. No trees and maize job for oh, a week. Yeah, like. really good yeah. That, yeah, I'd be good at that. I'd be good at that. See, if they were cheeky to me in that there, there'd be three out, Johnny. Now I could throw them out myself. I could change a lot of rules, Johnny. Slurry bomb would be left it. Uh, what do you he, think of that? He needs, <laughs> a, he needs to go in. I could see him in Stormont. Hi, <laughs> Joe! I probably wouldn't mind a job driving a ship. Big ship. Cruise liner. Yeah. Lots of barn sailor over here. Cruise liner. Driving a big ship. I'll be some job. And that's about all we have time for this week. Thank the two of you for taking time out of your busy schedule and letting the, the ship go down for two hours to come and talk to us. I'm glad we just, I'm, I'm glad we didn't piss you off. <laughs> <laughs>